Just talk to us, John, about how many tech-related roles you've hired for this year and how many more you still got to fill. Happy to. Caroline, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. You know, we've put 294 technologists, I think the number is, to work this wow. year with 100 openings still listed or 100 plus on our career site. Uh, in 25 years of me running technology talent acquisition programs, I've only seen a few of these disruptions, but I'm happy to say Millennium can be a welcome destination for those finding themselves on the job market. So talk to us about at your shop and, and others, and I'm sure if rivals might be doing something similar at the moment, what kind of candidates are you looking for? What type of roles are you filling? Great question. It, it, first, it starts across all levels, whether you're beginning your career or whether you want to be in a senior global position. We're recruiting across all of those levels. We also recruit across all of those technical competencies that I personally think are so attractive. Not only software engineering and full stack engineering, but security engineering and cloud engineering and these, these roles that involve unbelievable amounts of data within this industry that, that make things really, really excited, uh, exciting. And so um, over sort of a, a fairly typical technology stack, we seek those individuals that um, can solve problems, mm -hmm. that have grit, that are scrappy across a wider range of opportunities. Okay, so I can see if I was a technologist coming perhaps upended by the fact that I've just been let go by one of the big technology companies. I'm thinking, oh, well, I can get intellectual stimulation with Millennium. What about culture? Because many would say perhaps uh, in an uninformed or naive way, but certainly I would go, oh, finance on one heart side, you know, hard working, long hours, perhaps in the office, yeah. technology, yeah. more softer culture. What are you having to decide and, and educate people about in terms of your culture? Well, I'm really happy you, you said that because in my opinion, what we offer in the aggregate is, is really powerful and it's really special. It's not only that technology opportunity, it's not only the connection to our businesses, it's not only the impact you can provide, it's the respect for the individual and the collaboration on site. And the fact that that respect and the way we go about working with each other is extremely positive. Mm -hmm. And I'd love the chance to sort of talk to those who may think that would be otherwise. Okay, so let's just think about being in the office or yeah. not. Yeah. Uh, if I'm used to a hybrid culture or indeed a completely fully remote one, how are you thinking about where the talent is that you can hire? So first of all, from a location perspective, globally, we're, we're building out um, Miami, Dublin, Tel Aviv, Bangalore, uh, and Miami is going to be a big tech hub for us. Mm. We also have traditional opportunity in New York and London and Singapore, but we're also making sure that we um, are, are very, very focused on making you know, this talent, knowing there's some flexibility in our model, right? We are, in, we are enjoying returning to the office. That collaboration is really important to us. We can be flexible as well, as well as global location flexibility. When you say Miami, I immediately think of crypto. And is, does it matter which sector, which part of technology? Because basically, it's, I mean, technology is horizontal, it's not vertical anymore. But does it matter what type of company these people are coming from? In short, no. If the technology skills align, those cultural attributes, the sort of degree of problem solving, of course, that's interesting to us. But whether it's tech sector, crypto, or existing sector, or any other talent that's interested in what we're doing, the domain is not a prerequisite. I've had lots of conversations with people in finance, particularly those who are trying to hire talent, about the need for diversity, the need for pipeline. Yeah. I, am, I imagine technology fights that good fight too and worried about its own pipeline, ensuring that they have yeah. diversity in the workplace. How are you thinking about that when you're starting to hire these technologists? Yeah. It's a great question. It's extremely important to us. Um, We've seen really great uh, uh, activity in terms of females in the technology space and going into universities at, at greater rates and coming out of those programs at greater rates. Um, and, and cultural and racial diversity, incredibly important to us. It's all about diversity of thought, and we get that from all those different pockets. So heavy focus on all of that, whether it's uh, through affinity networks, through paid for programs, just through making sure we are out in those right pockets with, uh, with, with folks that help us as third parties to identify where those talent, that talent may sit. It's really important to us and, and it's gonna make us better. What are the ways in which you're having to be creative in the way you hire? Because as I said, I, I'm pretty sure Millennium, you're out here talking about this, but I'm sure Brevin Howard, some other big asset managers, alternative yeah. asset managers are doing something yeah. similar. How do you set yourself apart? How are you looking for alternative types of people to come to you? So at, at Millennium, in my opinion, and specific to my organization, I think we do a really good job of casting a really wide net. We need, we need the best talent. So whether it's 
having strategic relationships with search firms, whether it's using LinkedIn, whether it's using our vast employee network, uh, whether it's thinking about where these pools of talent may be that could be attractive to us and then advertising accordingly to those pools of talent, there's nothing that you could probably think of that we don't do. We, we want to get the very best talent, and so there's nothing in terms of a strategy we wouldn't try. Are a lot of them saying, mm, but I'm worried about the economic environment. Is this really a right time to be managing money in this space? Look, I, I, again, you know, as far as Millennium's concerned, what I'm super excited about and most proud of is this incredible, stable, 30-plus year track record with complex businesses that are always trying to find incredible new opportunities. Our technology organization has to react to those opportunities. Mm -hmm. And it's December 15th, and we're still working on 100 open positions. My team's not getting a break. So... Um, we are really excited that this model kind of has in the aggregate that also that stability along with the type of opportunity. And just to that point, it's interesting when we look at, for example, the labor data, when we look at unemployment still remaining so low, but still tech roles being eroded in technology, is the talent pool still really tight from your perspective? It is, but we have also seen significant uh, applications in the second half of this year, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons, to our platform because of everything that's been happening in 2022. So that pendulum is swinging and has swung towards us a bit, but uh, sure, it's still a competitive out there, a competitive market out there for top talent.